All on the ball and the ball is ships are rolling. All on the ball and the ball and hull. Welcome to Baltimore's Inner Harbor and historic ships in Baltimore. Home port to USS Constellation, the submarine USS Torsk, Coast Guard Cutter WHEC 37, Lightship 116 Chesapeake, and the seven foot knoll lighthouse. We're going to take a tour of USS Constellation, the last all sail warship built by the U.S. Navy and the largest example of Chesapeake Bay wooden shipbuilding afloat today. Are you ready to take the tour? Let's go aboard and see how the ship worked, learn about her history, and about the lives of the officers and crew who sailed aboard her. USS Constellation is a sloop of war, which is a rating much like the term frigate or ship of the line. As a sloop of war, the ship has its main battery of guns on one deck. A frigate has batteries of guns on two decks and a ship of the line on three decks. Constellation carried 16 of these 8-inch chambered shell guns, which fired an exploding shell, and four 18-pounders, which fired a solid ball. She also carried two parrot rifles mounted on the spar deck, giving her a total complement of 22 guns. Fire! Constellation carried a crew of around 325 sailors and officers. In addition to the captain, there were five line officers, which included the executive officer and lieutenants, five staff officers, a number of petty officers, a complement of marines, 20 ship's boys, and all the rest sailors, landsmen and ordinary seamen. With a crew of that size, the ship could be sailed 24 hours a day by dividing the crew into two groups known as watches. When one watch was on, the other was off and could do what they pleased unless assigned to some other work duty. The gallant ship and shipmates bold and free and never welcomes with delight Saturday night at sea. Constellation was home, school, and place of work for the ship's boys, age 11 to 17. Nicknamed Powder Monkeys, their job when the ship went into action with an enemy was to bring the powder charges to the gun crews as they were passed up from the powder magazine. Constellation's sailing rig is classified as a full-rigged ship, meaning that she has at least three masts and is square-rigged on all masts. The term square-rigged means that the majority of her driving sails were square sails, which were set between the yards, the horizontal spars mounted on each mast. The angle of the square sail relative to the ship and the wind direction was adjusted by the means of braces or lines led through blocks, or pulleys, on the outboard ends of the yards. Constellation's fastest point of sail was a broad reach, with the wind coming over the starboard or port quarter. At this angle to the wind, the ship could take full advantage of her square sails, triangular jibs and staysails, as well as the gaffed rig sail in the stern of the ship called the spanker. Constellation has no engines, she was powered only by the wind. On the spar deck is the ship's capstan. The capstan is the only machine on board Constellation. Powered by up to 48 sailors, the capstan was used for lifting anything heavy, such as the ship's 3,000 pound anchors. It could also be used for bringing heavy objects on board from ashore and lifting masts and yards up into the ship's rig. Forward on the gun deck is the ship's galley. The big iron stove was fired by coal and could prepare enough food for the entire crew. Food for sailors was rich in calories and provided the energy needed to keep the ship running all day and all night. We're all the way down in the bottom of the ship now. This area is called the ship's hold and was where water, food, and other supplies were stored. Constellation carried 26,000 gallons of water in 40 cast iron water tanks. In this area were also stored the barrels of salted pork, salted beef, salted butter, and salted fish. There was no refrigeration on board, so food had to be preserved with salt. Other areas of the ship, called bread rooms, were used for storing flour to make bread and ship's biscuit, otherwise known as hardtack. 
At either end of the ship's hold are the magazines, or the spaces where the gunpowder was stored. The magazines were lined with lead to eliminate the possibility of sparks igniting the gunpowder and causing an unintended explosion. Back in the 1860s, the only light below decks would have been provided by oil lamps. To light the powder magazine, lamps were lowered from the deck above into boxes with glass panes mounted to the overhead. The glass panes minimized the opportunity for sparks to fly into the powder. All wooden ships leak, and Constellation is no exception. The ship's hull planking is caulked with cotton, oakum, and pitch, but as time goes by, the seams open up and begin to let in small amounts of water. The ship's bilge pump was operated by six to eight men, three to four on each side. When one side pushed down, the other would pull up. This pump also functioned as the ship's fire pump and had a mechanism for pulling seawater from the outside and pushing it into a fire hose. Medical care aboard the ship was rudimentary at best. In the mid-1800s, people were just learning that washing your hands was a good thing. Sailors mostly suffered from traumatic accidents like falling from a loft or other injury. They also suffered from diseases such as yellow fever. The ship's surgeon and his assistants would do their best to bring the sick or injured sailor back to health, given the tools and knowledge at their disposal. While the captain and his officers slept in bunks and lived in comparative luxury, the sailors slept in hammocks slung on the berth deck. The hammocks were packed closely together and moved in unison with the movement of the ship. When not in use, hammocks and all personal gear were rolled up and stored in the hammock rails located on the spar deck. This area, known as the cabin, was where the captain lived. Here, he would entertain guests, invite his officers to join him for a meal, or discipline sailors who had broken rules on board the ship. The captain was the only person on board who had his own private washroom and toilet. The officer's wardroom is located on the berth deck all the way aft. The line officers had cabins on the starboard side and staff officers' cabins were on the port side. When not working, officers would use this space to take their meals and socialize. The ship's helm consists of two wheels attached by a wooden hub. Ropes wrapped around that hub lead all the way aft to the ship's tiller and rudder, and when the wheel is turned, the rudder moves from side to side, steering the ship. While underway, there would always be at least one sailor, or helmsman, steering the ship. In bad weather, there would be up to four sailors steering the large double wheel. How did the sailors know where to go? They were given a compass course to steer, provided by the sailing master, the officer in charge of the ship's navigation. For over 200 years, ships bearing the name Constellation have navigated the world's oceans, defending American interests. From the frigate Constellation, named for the flag of the Continental Congress, to the sloop of war we see here today, or the aircraft carrier Constellation built in the 1960s, ships bearing the Constellation name honor the tradition of always being the first to answer their nation's call. We hope you've enjoyed your tour. Please come and see us in Baltimore to walk the ship's decks and learn the ropes. We look forward to seeing you at Historic Ships in Baltimore and on board USS Constellation. Haul on the ball and so far cry to payday. Haul on the ball and the ball and haul. Haul on the ball and so early in the morning. Haul on the ball and the ball and haul.